Now that I've successfully built an oil change for this particular customer, I'd like to add some additional parts and labor to the ticket. To do so, I can either click on Outstanding Work Orders, or I could double click on the right hand side of the screen and it would do the same thing. So in this case, I'll double click on Marty Klosterman. I could double click on Marty again or highlight him and click on Parts. Again, it does the same thing. Now, in this particular case, it was identified that this customer needed a new serpentine belt. So if I wanted to add some additional parts and labor to this particular ticket, I would simply right click with my mouse anywhere in the part number column. By right clicking, I see I get a menu of choices, several options here. First one on the top of the list is called Vast Commerce. I'll fly out to the right hand side where it says V item broker. Now to identify or to find the proper serpentine belt for this particular vehicle, I would simply click on belts and cooling and double click on belts here underneath the part group. Now I could do the alpha search here at the top of the screen, but I strongly discourage doing so. You're gonna come up with much better, more accurate results by going into the actual part category and the part group. So in this case, when I double click on belts, you notice that it automatically looks at my local inventory first. I see a green plus sign here in the upper left hand corner, and I can easily see that the Gates brand serpentine belt, part number K060923, is something that I have one of in my local inventory. My cost on it is $23.88, and I've established a selling price on that particular product for $62.99. That's something that's built on my master table and something that I stock locally. Now I could click on this little icon here and it would show me some details um, about this particular product, all the different attributes as far as the outside circumference, the rib quantity, so on and so forth. Some nice details about that particular part. I can go ahead and print that or I can go ahead and close that. Now, if I did not have this belt in stock, you see on the left hand side of my screen here, I have several different choices of what we call open web suppliers or outside sources where I could purchase this particular part from or check for cost and availability. Your list may be different slightly than mine and the order in which they are can be identified and set up specifically. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight O'Reilly. When I click on O'Reilly, it's checking for cost and availability for a serpentine belt or for all belts for that particular vehicle. As you can see here, it came back with several results. In the upper right hand corner, I wanna point your attention to the fact that we can narrow down these results by product line or by product type or other qualifiers. And it may make your search function or your time looking for these products a little bit faster and easier. For example, if I was looking for a very specific part type, if I didn't want the component kit or the pulley or anything else, and I just wanted the serpentine belts to be returned, I could unselect all and put a check mark on serpentine belt, apply the filter, and it narrowed down my search results considerably. I can scroll up and down, and again, I've got the ability to look at what my current cost is here and availability and the selling price. So when we look at the supplier cost, this is what you're gonna pay for this particular part. This is the suggested list price at the supplier for that particular part. However, the price that we're gonna be charging the customer is going to be based on a cost times cost multiplier established in the system. So in this case, if I bought a serpentine belt, a Gates belt here, K060930 for $39.99, it would be suggested that I sell it for $99.98. If I was looking for any of these other belts, as you can see, I can find the cost and availability. And again, I have the ability to not only look at the details of this, but I can click on pictures and uh, see the details on that. In this case, if I wanted to go ahead and select this particular serpentine belt, I could put a check mark on it. I know I wanna buy it from O'Reilly. I know my cost. I know the availability is one. And if I also wanna look up labor for this particular function, I can simply click on the labor tab in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Here when I click on the labor tab, it remembers the fact that we were just looking for labor or we were just looking for a part type of a serpentine belt. If I double click on this, it assumes that I'm looking for labor for the same. Double clicking on it automatically brought me to the labor results for a drive belt R&R. &R. And I could scroll up and down through the different functions here. Here I see I've got drive belt R&R &R for four tenths of an hour, and it shows me all the different vehicle details. 
I could hide these vehicle details if I didn't want to see as much information. And I see here the drive belt R&R &R listed a couple different times uh, based on the different type of removal. So all of them are showing 0.4 hours. I'm going to go ahead and put a check mark on drive belt R&R, &R, 0.4, and post this. Now when I click on post, it automatically transferred the air conditioning serpentine belt at $102.48 and the labor to perform that function at $57.50 based on the hours and my labor rate per hour. Now I have the ability to go to the customer and explain to them what the total will be for the belts. In this case, I can look at the top of the screen and easily see that the belts and cooling parts are 102, the labor at 57 for a total of 159.98. So it's easy for me to identify for the customer how much just that particular work is to be done in addition to their oil change. If I click all here at the top of the screen, it displays all other parts on the work order. If the customer approves this work to be done and you would now like to order that part electronically from the supplier, you can simply, again, on the part number column, right click and choose an option called V order, second option from the top of the list. It will look at all parts that are on the repair order currently that were selected using V item broker. And here you can see that it remembered the fact that we looked up this particular belt from O'Reilly and it shows again the availability, the quantity that are needed, what my cost is, and the local store location that I would be purchasing this from. It has a check mark on order. I can simply click on order at this point and it would automatically submit an electronic purchase order request for this particular part at my local O'Reilly store and they would get the printout and deliver the part accordingly. Once the part arrived, I would simply open up the repair order, right click once again, and go to outside purchase to receive that particular part. In addition to the part and labor being brought over to the work order from the V item broker and the labor function, we see the description of the part, we see the generic description of the labor. However, in the SRV column here, this stands for service writer, I can hover my mouse over the check mark and it displays for me what that particular service was. And that is obviously the drive belt R&R &R and what's included in that particular service. So again, hovering my mouse over, it will show me that particular uh, description that will be printed on the repair order. Actually clicking on the checkbox opens it up where I can make any changes to it as needed.